And now we have the inevitable quiz. So, hold on. Pick an answer. Uh, let's say, which process group is the project manager working in? Oh, Did you say Susan Charlie? Yes. Okay. The actual answer is B is in Bravo. Oh, you know, you're right. <laughs> and validating scope <clears throat> is actually the worst named process of the 49 processes. <clears throat> Swall swallowed a frog there. So I'm going to give you that one. Okay. Question number two. <clears throat> wow. Of the initiating process group, I'm going to myself, all right, uh, we know that we establish a vision, we define and authorize a project um, during that time, so this output Organized process assets. Something of the process group. Organized process assets. I would say it would be B as an output of the that, process. Group. Okay, as an output of the initiating process group. Now remember, the initiating process group starts. The project, and so the project charter is actually what we're looking for here. Oh, okay. So, and I don't think of that Remember, as an organization. Yeah. So, I, we're, so we're looking at output, and again, this this is kind of a, a good way to look at the trickiness of the question. So, the key there is output. Um, you know, the organizational process assets are the internal things that you have from your project. Um, so. Basically, the project charter is the thing that really kicks off the project because the project charter names the project manager. Okay, I guess I looked at it like it's not tangible. It's intangible because it's just a the project charter. So I didn't. But you're right. It is an output. Okay. Right. So that's so. And again, you know, we're all going by PMI's definition <clears throat> of you know what the uh, inputs, tools, and techniques and outputs are. Okay, so question three. Okay, during the planning process. A. A, correct, the project oh. manager. Yeah. Uh oh, well, see, I'm glad I caught that before you changed your mind. But the, so when you get to, in initiating is when the project manager is determined. So there may be other people involved in the development of the project charter. Well, I figured you know, when it's set, once it said project, you know, because the planning process, we, we have our functional manager is in the planning process, but it's more so the project manager is controlling the project, you know, as far as the planning process. Right. Our yeah, I was going to up with more of the, you know, um, the operations of the business and where to set it up, but our project manager is the one who's planning the processes for the project. At least Okay. Here. And okay and but and remember now for the four hours of the the PMI exam, you want to use their definitions and their um, terminology. So here the project manager is in control of the project throughout the life cycle. So even in a functionally based situation where the project manager has little or no control over anything at all, they still consider the project manager to be in control. Okay. All right. Okay, number four. High-level project schedule constraints have been determined. Uh, 
I would think it's in the initiating stage. It's Correct. either I was going to say it's either D or it's A, but I think it's D. Okay. And it is and D, and that is another thing while you're taking pra practice tests and even while you're taking these quizzes, you may want to look at how your gut reaction works as opposed to, you know, once you think it through it, um, in other words, especially in, in the context of a four hour exam, you know, <clears throat> as time goes on, you're going to get more and more tired. And so your first reaction might be the best, you know, when at the end of the test, when you come back and look at the questions more, you know, if you see an obvious error where you missed the word not, or, <clears throat> you know, there was some other key terminology, product versus project, that you didn't factor into your answer in the first place, you might want to make a change. But just in terms of gut reaction, you might want to keep track of how often your gut reaction is right and how often when you change an answer, that change is correct. Because oh, okay. Yes, that's true. You know, so if, if you keep track, to look yeah, and, if, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so if you keep track of that and you know it yourself, then you can be more aware when you're taking the actual test. So I'm just saying, you know, as a side note, you might want to keep that information in line. Um, in your head or you know keep mark it down on paper and see how you do okay Qu question five <clears throat> okay Um, well, now generally what my, well, my cost of changes increases the project approaches to completion. Uh, cost of changes, yes, um, but my risk and uncertainty are greatest at the start of the project. Um, stakeholder influence is greatest toward the end of the project. No, that should be in the beginning. So I would say cost of changes increases as the project approaches completion. Okay, I don't increase. I would say C. Uh, the actual correct answer is B. So you talked yourself out of it because um, I oh. think it was which of the following is not true about the project life cycle? And oh. Okay. The, oh, okay. That's the, yeah. And on the exam, they probably won't highlight bold the word not. So you've got to be very careful about looking for that word not. You're right, because that's exactly what I said. I said stakeholder influence is the greatest story. I said no, they're not. And you're right. Yeah, I, so you I, got it. But you, not true. You know, right. So, so again, part of the test is the trickiness of reading the question and finding that word not. Okay, we've got more questions for you. Here's question six. All right. Included in what does it say? The oh, all oh my goodness, my glasses. Uh, it says which of the following process groups should be included in all? Oh, okay. oh um, see. Um, is that your final answer? all of them and executing and executing. Yes. Okay, the actual answer is A, that actually all of these processes must be included, you know but again, the level to which all of these processes or the process... They all, they all take place. Why? I, I will tell you what I was thinking when I read it. I'm thinking okay. what what overlaps all areas? Monitoring oh, okay. and controlling. It takes place throughout. So I didn't I didn't read it thoroughly and think about it. But I know oh. monitoring and controlling goes through from the initiating to it overlaps in all areas. So that's good. Uh, well, and that's good that you know. And I was gonna say, and that is a good concept. You know, so you've got that monitoring and controlling, you know, very well cemented. 
and just realize that the questions, even if there's not a whole lot of words, can be very tricky in their wording. So, but, again, but yes, this this process, the initiate planning, the IPEPM CC is part of all the projects. Correct. Yes, so that I know. Okay, next question. How many process goals knowledge areas and process covered in the uh, That would be knowledge areas and process. That would be B. B is in Bravo? B is in Bravo. Very good. That is that there are five process groups, 10 knowledge areas, and 49 processes. Yep. And again, you know, as a, the change from the PMBOK 5, um, they took out pros, pro, closed procurements and they added the three manage project knowledge, control resources, and implement risk responses. Okay, question eight. Last question for this section. In which process group? You'd be lucky that it's the last question for the day. Uh, it would be C. C as in Charlie is correct. Oh, the execution. Right, so that's where the team delivers the work specified. Yep. So, very good. And in general, what you want to think about when you're taking the exam is that you want to be scoring in the upper 70s pretty regularly on practice exams um, before oh. you take the real exam. I'd really like to be able to take, that's right, you said go on and look at one of them and we'll be able yeah. to take one of the exams, the reviews. Yeah. So go, go online and see if you can find one to take, you know, obviously with answers, because I think that'll be helpful. Okay, so some of the key takeaways from this, um, from this section are what is the product, project life cycle address? And that is what should you do to get the work done? Whereas the pro project management process addresses the question, what should you do to manage the project? So, you know, again, that differentiation between project and product. Again, we've got 49 processes grouped into 10 knowledge areas and mapped to the five process groups. Initiating defines the new project or phase. Planning establishes the total scope of the effort, the objectives, the course of action, and that will all be done to obtain the objectives. And there are the most processes in planning. Um, executing completes the work defined in the project to spe specify, satisfy the project specifications, and monitoring and controlling overarches everything and regulates the performance on the project. And again, it deals with the change management processes. And finally, last but not least, well, maybe least to closing, finalizes the activities across the process groups and completes the project.